Welcome to the session on post-marketing surveillance. For those of you who've looked at clinical trials or who understand how many phases of clinical trials are there, there's really four phases of clinical trials. So all the way beginning from preclinical testing in animals to phase one with small groups of healthy volunteers to phase two with larger groups, and then phase three, which includes sick and diseased people, we come to now phase four, which is known as post-marketing surveillance. Phase four of clinical trials is fairly newer to the clinical trials world. It didn't exist as of several decades ago. And the reason why it came about was because of some very, very bad reactions to medications that have come about over the years, which are also known as sentinel events. So a sentinel event is an event that signifies a change or a paradigm shift in the way medicine is practiced. And so these sentinel events have led us to the place where we've started doing post-marketing surveillance to better understand what happens once a medication is out in the population. Clinical trials only provide us information about the study population and what happens within that laboratory setting. But once we're in the real world, once we're in clinical practice, we see millions millions of patients. And so millions of patients who are receiving these medications, we don't know how the drug is going to actually react. Um, there are lots of limitations to clinical trials, which I will eventually discuss. So to begin with, post-marketing surveillance is also known as pharmacovigilance. Pharmacovigilance is a term that come, that is a combination of two different words. So pharmacon, which is Greek and means medicinal substances, and vigile, which is Latin, that means to keep watch. So it literally means to keep watch on medicinal substances. The World Health Organization in 2002 has defined pharmacovigilance as the detection, assessment, understanding, and prevention of adverse drug events. Why have pharmacovigilance? As Dr. Vladimir Lepakin once said at the Geneva Convention, that dying from a disease is sometimes unavoidable, but dying from a medicine is unacceptable. Medications are supposed to change lives. They're supposed to save lives, not to kill people. And so once we get into that paradigm shift of caring for people, then we realize that it's important to make sure that these adverse drug events are minimized to the fullest possible extent. And this can only happen if we keep watch, if we are very vigilant and alert about what's going on with the population. Before I move on, let's do some basic terminology. Side effect. So side effect is any unintended consequence that occurs from a drug. So it's not something that we had intended or asked for, but it's just happening as a result of somebody taking the medication. An adverse event, an adverse drug event, is any untoward um, event that is occurring as a result of somebody encountering a medical product or a medication that results in some unintended consequences. But it does not necessarily have a causal relationship with the treatment. So this effect is not necessarily causal. So the event may be occurring because of other circumstances, because something else might be entering with the, inferring or interfering with the drug itself. But it may not necessarily be because of the drug itself. Once you prove the relationship between the drug and the effect, after an ADE has happened, it becomes ADR. So ADR is really the causal relationship between the drug and an ADE. Once you establish that the drug has led to the adverse event, then it becomes an adverse drug reaction. So adverse drug reactions are something that we are really concerned with because it's causality, and this is something that we really want to minimize in the population. In clinical trials, like I said before, there are fewer number of patients in a laboratory well-defined setting. A lot of vulnerable populations like pregnant women, elderly children, end up being excused from the study itself or being excluded from the study. But in clinical practice, there are millions of patients who may have multiple comorbidities. There might be um, drug-food interactions, drug-drug interactions, all of these things that we may not get information from a clinical trial itself. Therefore, it becomes extremely important after a drug is released into the market to monitor it to see what kinds of ADEs or ADRs might occur. 